always good to probably have a little bit, just in case of uh, long term. It also becomes more important if you're competing multiple times over events, because then you're, you're um, getting frequent kind of um, stimulus to break down, and that means you start breaking down once you're competing frequently. Main things you want to be thinking about are the intensity and duration and the time before the next race. So that's going to be like what type of carbohydrate, whether it's sugar, whether it's fat, fatting, or whether it's um, uh, complex carbohydrate and long food, uh, it's going to be a bit slower. Um, so, if you have one gram of carbohydrate per kilo, if you're kind of baseline for a high sense of recovery, that's your foot clock back in what you uh, replaced, replaced it with your phone off, um, what if it was a, a 50% session? How many grams of carbohydrate would an 80 kilo athlete be going for? 50% <coughs> session, fairly technical. Yeah, 80 kilo athlete. If one, one gram of carbohydrate per kilo is for your maximal training, 50% training, 80 kilo athlete. How much did they come for? 40 grams. Exactly, 40 grams, yeah? So just make it nice and specific what you need to make sure that your nutrition is tailored to what you're doing. And so that leads us on to um, have a bit of a discussion about different types, different types of carbs and when they can be more or less suitable. So uh, your high GI, low GI, moderate GI, most of you will know this and we covered it a little bit in the last session. What's the difference between them? What is glycemic index? <coughs> multiple times in a day, the, th the threshold seems to be about kind of six to eight hours. If you've got about uh, less than eight hours before your next uh, race or your next higher training session, then there's going to be a long time to restore your muscle glycogen. Um, it's going to be good just to top up your blood sugar levels so your body's got that extra substrate to use. If you've got that like, overnight um, or a period of time to recover, then you're, you're better off going with uh, low or moderate GI. And as a rule, a general rule of thumb, a lot of these uh, foods are actually more nutrient dense as well. So then you're thinking about not just getting an energy, but getting an energy that's gonna be good for your like long-term health. That all make sense? Yeah, so match what you need to what your demands are. So that's gonna um, bring us on to some of the information that you've got and help guide some of your decisions, whether you're doing a, a head, a single race, <coughs> Protein, like we said, very important for long-term adaptation, less important for short-term, just to talk, uh, stocking up your fuel. It's not gonna be bad for you, but there are, the main issue with consuming too much protein on race day is over fullness, feeling like a little bit bloated, uh, protein keeps you full for a long period of time, um, and it obstructing you consuming sufficient carbohydrates. If you're having a big old steak, you're not gonna get in as much carbohydrate as you would, um, and so, 
working with a few athletes, I generally try and push them towards vegetarian proteins, closer to races. Means that you're actually going to get some carbohydrate coupled with your protein, so you're increasing the kind of um, <coughs> yeah, the amount of um, carbohydrates per calorie you're getting into your body. All right, so milk, a really good one. Um, <coughs> got some powdery milk there today. Uh, really quite cheap, convenient. You can even have a, like a pack of that instead of whey protein in your sports bag, really easy to carry around. Um, yogurt, and then obviously beans, pulses, grains, uh, your typical kind of baking proteins who are also quite high in carbohydrates. <coughs> so, for competition fueling then, for uh, meal before competition or a recovery from, you want to make sure you've got sufficient carbs, rather than just adding the Race or the night before? Sorry, Freddie, because um, there's a few um, new rowers in here, can I just quickly explain the competition structure for some of them? Yeah, you've got two rate types of races, the head races that you did at the Bristol Head, and you've got the regatta races. Um, the Bucks regatta that you guys will be part of, you'll probably only do, well, you'll probably do three races a day, a heat, a semi, and a final. Heat's a time trial, it's kind of spread out over the, dr over the day, so each of those is about a 2K race for let's just say eight minutes um, and then you've got a couple of hours between those races so that hopefully that helps you understand later on in the, for the summer racing um, but coming up we've got the Bucks head and we've got the women's and um, men's heads they are for the Bucks heads for some of you you'll be doing two races each day you'll row all the way to the start line and then you'll kind of race back um, and that'll be one race um, if you're doing both divisions, you'll have two races on that day, um, and that's the same for the seniors. Um, but for the women's and eights heads, it's just the one race for like 15, 16, 17 minutes. Does that make sense? But you will be sitting out there for a long time beforehand um, in the marshalling area. Cool. Sorry. So it makes sense that with those, with those heads, if you're going to be for a long time beforehand, a low GI, quite large breakfast, and that will probably see you through. You're only like, you know, going to do out for a quarter of an hour, which won't be enough to completely deplete all of your glycogen levels. A good, slow releasing, low GI breakfast and sufficient recovery the night before should be all you need. However, if you're then racing multiple times per day, uh, if you're doing one of the regattas later on in the season, then you would be looking at trying to get some blood <coughs> on board in between races, just to make sure your blood uh, sugar levels are topped up and you can't be replacing everything that you're burning off. Pre-race night before, uh, pre-competition meal, generally about three hours before, um, is tolerated by most people. If not, try and push it back about four hours or even two hours might be okay for some. So practice, practice definitely. Try and get on a little dry run before competition day on knowing what suits you and what's gonna make you feel sick and what's gonna be tolerable. <coughs> Low GI, so um, whole grain or granary bread, pastas, uh, some cereals, porridge, um, and yeah, like a big meal, we're going to be talking kind of one, potentially three um, grams of carbohydrate per kilo, so really sort of like doubling or tripling that proportion if, you, if you're not very good at frequent snacking, you're not very good at keep on topping up throughout the day. I kind of keep that one gram as a, as a baseline, so a, a standard portion of, of pasta, like 70, 75 grams, kind of what they, they point you towards on the packet. Pre-event, you might want a little bit of sugar to top up. You might want a little bit of uh, something just to give you a boost. Um, some athletes uh, work like work well with caffeine, caffeinated gels, or a bit of coffee. <coughs> Again, um, it's not necessarily 100% necessary, but uh, if you are considering anything like that, make sure it's a, a batch-tested product. So it's part of the endpoint support program, so you know it's been uh, batch-tested for any contamination. Less likely to bear any drugs there. Uh, also, just less likely to be contaminated, so you don't want 
in there. Um, and practice. Really make sure you practice beforehand because different people respond to caffeine in different ways. Um, 45 minutes pre-event for a head race is probably when you're boating for a lot of people, actually when you're getting on the water. Thank <laughs> you. 